Today, we're going to concentrate on the middle of a painting and the end of a painting, which I don't usually do. So let's get started. Today, what I want to do is focus on not the beginning of a watercolor, but the middle part and the ending part. And I'm going to slow it down and do some triad work in a minute, so you'll be able to see that. Um, I'm really influenced by using even fewer strokes than normal these days. Uh, I looked at some interesting things on the internet, and that made me uh, really influenced what I want to do. So I'm going to very quickly put in some of these beginning shapes. So I'm looking at the value, how relatively light or dark something is, and plugging value uh, into color. So in other words, I don't, all I'm looking at is shape, color, and value, and deciding um, how, how to execute that. Keeping things really, really simple. It's a 12 by 12 piece of Arsh uh, paper, and uh, it's cold press, and the brush is probably right now a 16 flat. Oh, I know, because, um, but I'm going to pick up a larger brush in a minute because I have the commitment to have as few strokes as possible. So this is speeded up. This is probably about four times as fast as I work, I'm guessing. And the whole point of this is, uh, like I said, I'm calling the circles and squares. It's not really all circles and squares, but my the point of it is I'll never be an abstract painter, but I would like to get as close to abstract as I possibly can. So what I'm doing, as I said, is just putting in the value relationships to start with. My relatively lights, my mediums, and my darks. And I'm not using any masking fluid or white out. I'm just painting around my whites. And we're going to get through this stage uh, fairly quickly because I want to concentrate on the middle part. Because I think lots of times with my videos, I concentrate on the beginning, but not necessarily the middle and the end. So I've picked up, um, I think that's a bigger, bigger brush, I'm not sure. Nope, same brush, same brush. And for the most part, the colors that I'm using here are Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Naples Yellow, and Cerulean Blue. Um, not, that's probably about the core of what's going on here. There are fewer, few outliers to those colors, but almost everything is being mixed from those colors. So this is what I call my first pass at a painting. I'm going to get everything really well established, but um, there are no real dark darks yet. Uh, there are some light lights. Like I said, I'm leaving the whites of the paper white, so those are going to remain. But in a minute, I'm going to address uh, these midtones and make some distinctions, and that's what I want to concentrate on. So hang on for a second, and we will get there. I notice in doing these how much I seem to circle around in a circular pattern as I do these paintings, which is kind of interesting to me. I don't look at individual things. You probably know that by now. Everything is related to everything else, and everything is connected, so there are no individual things. All right, in one second, we're going to get onto the triad work, which is the reason I wanted to make this video. Triad work. Here we go. All right. So everything has dried from step number one, because I've gone away, and now I'm coming back in, and boy, I'm sorry that I cut off that top. This is the triad work that I want to concentrate on doing. I have ultramarine blue, a, a permanent rose, and also some um, yellow ochre. And with a large brush, this is a larger brush now, it's a number 20 flat. I've loaded it up, and I'm doing some triad work. I started with ultramarine blue, added the rose, and then you can see the yellow ochre coming in. Back to the rose. Here's the ultramarine blue going in. And while everything's still wet, putting in the rose and a little bit of that yellow ochre. So you can see, I'm using three colors to accomplish one task here. And the task was to make this patch darker than what had been there before. I had laid in something earlier, but I needed something to be darker. All the work that's going on here now is triad work. Same thing, ultramarine blue with a little bit of permanent rose. This is slowed down, I should say, too. Uh, no, no, this is in real time. That's right, I'm so used to doing these fast. This is, this is real time. So you can see how that triad went in. I don't wet the paper first. I let the wet paint work into the wet paint so it joins each other. This is still part of the second step. 
again, triad work. I've established my triad. As I said before, it's ultramarine blue, permanent rose, and a little bit of yellow ochre to make things warm. Typically for me, a triad is um, a red, a yellow, and a blue. Because I need that because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to portray gray here. But rather than mix up a gray, I want three colors to accomplish that task. Now I'm starting to work um, faster because I'm realizing that um, I've got I've, I've pretty well established the relationships I want. All right, now we're going to look at the last step because I always speed through the last step. All right, I had a barking dog, so I had to close the uh, door just for a second. So here we go. Um, this is where I establish my darkest darks. There they are, they're going in, and it's two colors in this case. I'm using, um, well, not all the time, but on that piece of red paper, it would have been alizarin crimson and some ultramarine blue. I really, really, really need this next dark, these next darks to unite the painting. The overall painting is sort of in the mid-tones, so I, but I need a few darks in order for it to pop. If I don't put those darks in, it's going to be sort of... Um, well, you could go back to the middle part and you'll see you just end up with mid-tones. A lot of paintings um, that I see with students end up in the mid-tones because they don't bring the value range all the way from the whitest whites down to the darkest darks. Now, this my darkest dark in this case is probably, mm, I'm going to think maybe a seven or eight. So I could go darker, but everything is relative. And if I would go much darker than I already am with my darks, it would be out of balance, too dark, so to speak. But I want those shapes. All I care about is the shapes, and they have to be pleasing shapes. And my interest in this is, like I said, I'm really approaching this as, it's, as if it's an abstract painting. It's just a lot of round shapes and square shapes. I'm interested um, in sort of uh, going near where abstract is, but remaining in the world of what real things are. And you, there you can see the triad work on that, uh, that triangle up above that I talked you through when we slowed down a little bit. And there's the finished painting. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And mass for value means find the mass, find the um, general mass, and then mix up three colors to fill it in. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.